Hello, my name is João Viana. I'm a member of the Global Renal Exercise Network Organizing Committee, and I'm head of research at the University of Maya in Portugal, where I also live a research group on exercise and chronic kidney disease. Today, I will be sharing our experience with the Fresenius Nephrocare Portugal Intradialytic Exercise Program. This program started as a pilot project in a single dialysis unit. And with the support of the Nephrocare Portugal Executive and Medical Boards, it was then expanded to national level, being offered to all Nephrocare dialysis units. For this purpose, a national coordinator was nominated and a nurse and a doctor were selected in each participating dialysis unit and named as local coordinators. These coordinators receive appropriate training and their dialysis units are provided with all the necessary exercise equipment. Their role is critical as they are responsible for supervising exercise training and assessments, but importantly, they still have to cope with their daily routine. Also of note is the exercise science master degree internship program we have put in place, where our students are placed in some dialysis units and in this case are fully committed to the exercise program. The exercise training protocol was designed to be easy to learn for the majority of the patients and with low supervision by the dialysis staff. As you know, hemodialysis treatment is performed three times per week over a period of around three to four hours. Exercise is performed every dialysis session between the first 30 minutes and the last 90 minutes of treatment. It includes an aerobic bout of, on a cycle ergometer at moderate intensity and for up to 60 minutes. Followed by strength training exercises using squeeze balls and ankle weights. The exercise progression is reviewed every two weeks. Specifically, for the aerobic components, exercise duration increases first, up to 60 minutes, followed by increases in cycling resistance. While for the strength training, the number of sets increases first, from one to four, followed by weight increases. At baseline and every three months, patients perform the following physical function tests. 30 seconds and five times sit to stand tests to assess muscle resistance and power. Eight foot up and go to assess agility and dynamic balance. Single leg stance to assess static balance and then the grip strength as well as body composition assessment using the Fresenius Medical Care BCM. Of note, a digital platform was developed to monitor the implementation of the program and every exercise session, as well as every assessment is digitally recorded. The national coordinator of this program is doing a PhD project with us that aims to examine its implementation as well as to explore its relationships with art outcomes. Today, I will share some preliminary data from the analysis of the first year of implementation of the program using the RE-AIM framework. For each dimension of this framework, specific implementation outcomes were adapted to intradialytic exercise. Here, I will highlight some of our findings. Starting with adoption in the first year, 21 out of the 36 Nephrocare dialysis units adopted the program, representing 58%. With regards to the dimension reach, in the first year, over 2,000 patients were assessed, of which about 56% were eligible and invited to participate in the program. Of those, over 800 patients accepted to participate, representing about two-thirds of the eligible patients. Main reasons for exclusion were physical cognitive incapacity and cardiovascular risk, representing respectively 50% and 35%. Importantly, patients refusing the intervention had worse clinical status at baseline, as illustrated here by older age, type of vascular access, higher dialysis vintage, and presence of comorbidities, including cardiovascular disease. Moving on to implementation, the patient adherence to exercise session was on average 
When looking at this data on a treatment basis, we can observe here that in 77% of the more than 50,000 hemodialysis sessions, exercise was performed as prescribed, while in 19.3% exercise was either non-performed or only partially performed. An important point to highlight here is that in both cases, the main reason for not performing or interrupting exercise was patient refusal. With regards to the dimension maintenance, at setting level, the number of and proportion of settings that continued the intervention was 21 dialysis units representing 100%. However, at patient level, the attrition rate during the first year of implementation was 57%. And again, the main reason for dropout was voluntary withdrawal, with about half of the patients opting out of the program. Looking at the occurrence of voluntary withdrawal over time, we can see here that the majority occurred within the first six months. With regards to effectiveness, we will only briefly present measures of safety and physical function. For safety, we are able to compare included patients that completed the one-year intervention versus those who were eligible but refused to participate. And overall, there were no differences in adverse events over the year. For physical function, we can only look at those who completed one year of intervention as those that did not participate did not perform such assessments. Even so, looking at the data from 347 patients, we can see here that overall, the performance of all tests have improved after one year, except for UNDRIP strength. However, in secondary analysis by exercise dose or frequency that we are currently undertaking, this reduction in UNDRIP seems to be heavily influenced by the lower exercise dose or frequency groups. So to briefly summarize our data, from one year of clinical exercise implementation, we had 58% units adopting the program. We reached 56% of the total hemodialysis patient pool in those clinics. And of those, 64% accepted to participate, with about 75% adherence to exercise sessions that was safe and provided physical function improvements. But although there was no dropout at setting level, there was a 57 patient dropout with about half of these opting out voluntarily. We can conclude that large scale implementation of intradialytic exercise is, is a realistic and safe way to promote physical activity in hemodialysis patients, yet strategies to increase patients' acceptability and long-term adherence are definitely needed. You can find more details of our program, as well as some other very good examples from other countries in this publication. Here, I would just like to highlight one of the points raised when reviewing, reviewing those programs. That states that exercise programs in dialysis clinics are best implemented and sustained if managed by exercise professionals. And finally, we must also note that intradialytic exercise is just one part of what should be a comprehensive lifestyle modification that must also include daily physical activity promotion and structured exercise outside of the clinics. Thank you, and I will be happy to take any questions you might have.